very warm welcome you watching world 360 i'm akanksha swaroop now the simmering conflict between israel and hezbollah is boiling over more than 500 people were killed in a single day of airstrikes as israel targeted hezbollah's commanders and weapons tens of thousands of lebanese have fled from the south and hezbollah is hitting back as bad as things seem, they could get a lot worse. Israel has more troops in the north than it has had for the past nine months, though a ground invasion would demand larger numbers. Fears are growing that both sides are trapped on a path towards a terrifying conflagration. But do they still have time to step back? Meanwhile, India is hopeful for peace efforts on its part when it comes to the war in Ukraine. This as the Ukrainian president met the US president and vice president in the United States. All this as the 79th UN General Assembly commenced on Tuesday against a backdrop of escalating global tensions and ongoing conflicts with world leaders gathering to address pressing international issues. We'll deep dive on our top stories but first up are the headlines. The Israeli army has officially announced the killing of Hezbollah's leader Hassan Nasrallah one day after carrying out a large-scale attack on Lebanon. The IDF said Nasrallah, who led the Iran-backed militant group for more than three decades, was killed on Friday as fighter jets conducted what it described as a targeted strike on Hezbollah's headquarters in Lebanon's capital of Beirut. Russian President Vladimir Putin has issued a nuclear warning to the West in response to massive air attack on Russia. The move came amid rising concerns in Russia over Ukraine being allowed by Western powers to use cruise missiles against it. Donald Trump has been briefed by US intelligence on threats from Iran to assassinate him according to his campaign. The Republican presidential candidate was briefed regarding real and specific threats from Iran to assassinate Trump in an effort to destabilize and sow chaos in the United States. And an image of billionaire Elon Musk and Italian Prime Minister Giorgio Meloni is going viral on social media which has triggered social media reactions that the two are dating. Now, the Israel-Lebanon war is escalating with the deadliest barrage since the 2006 Israel-Hezbollah war. Over 500 people have been struck in Lebanon by Israeli forces. This follows explosions across Lebanon from pagers and walkie-talkies causing several deaths and injuries. But Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khomeini insists that Hezbollah still stands strong despite losing some of its top commanders to Israeli strikes. Israel has upped its ante from a war of attrition, thereby putting the region on the brink of a full-blown war. Take a look at this report. For almost a year, Israel and Hezbollah have engaged in increasingly provocative cross-border skirmishes, sending alarm bells across the Middle East and the world. But over the last one week, World War III is looking more and more likely as both sides are upping the ante. Hezbollah fired a ballistic missile targeting Israeli spy agency Mossad's headquarters near Tel Aviv. It was the first time the group has claimed a ballistic missile strike since its nearly year-long battle with Israel began in October 2023. Hezbollah said it had launched a Qadar-1 ballistic missile targeting spy agency Mossad's headquarters. The Israeli military said it had intercepted the surface-to-surface -surface missile in the morning, but there were no reports of any casualties or damage. Israel's military has vowed to speed up its offensive operations against Hezbollah without reprieve. Troops held exercises simulating ground combat in Lebanon, which the military has not ruled out yet. Israel's army said it has launched strikes against 60 Hezbollah positions across Lebanon. It says the attacks targeted sites used by Hezbollah's intelligence division, including headquarters and other infrastructure used in the gathering of intelligence. It's been a deadly week for Hezbollah. It started with a twin attack by Israel when pagers and walkie-talkies used by Hezbollah members simultaneously exploded across the country. 
It was followed by an Israeli airstrike on a building in a densely populated area of Beirut, which killed at least 45 people, including a top commander and other senior operatives. Then came the biggest blow. Israeli warplanes bombed Lebanon continuously, killing more than 500 people. But Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, insists that Hezbollah still stands strong, despite losing some of its top commanders to Israeli strikes. He admitted that Hezbollah has been weakened, but it will survive. The October 7 Hamas attack, which sparked a war in Gaza, has since then drawn in Hezbollah and other Iran-backed militants from across the Middle East. Despite the high rhetoric, for the longest time, no party had shown any interest in a full-scale war. Israel has the military power to devastate Lebanon, as it did in Gaza. Even a weakened Hezbollah can still fire thousands of missiles at Israeli strategic sites. But the scale of Israel's recent attacks may have turned the page of this war of attrition into a new and far more dangerous phase, thereby putting the region on the brink of a full-scale war. The 79th session of the General Assembly of the United Nations opened this week in New York City and escalation in Lebanon has put the UN General Assembly to test already. UN Secretary has already feared that Lebanon is on the brink of collapse and could become another Gaza. As the tensions continue to escalate between Israel and Lebanon, as Israeli Prime Minister has rejected calls for ceasefire from Lebanon and in fact has asked its army to step up its offensive against Hezbollah. IDF has eliminated Mohammad Hussein Saroor, the commander of Hezbollah's aerial command in a precise air force strike. These developments have also added to international alarm that intensifying violence between Israel and Hezbollah in Lebanon has put the region on the brink of a wider catastrophe. The US and France have called for a 21-day temporary ceasefire between Israel and Hezbollah to make way for broader negotiations. Now, due to escalating tensions in the Middle East, the Indian Embassy in Beirut has also released a travel advisory urging Indian nationals to exercise heightened caution and advised against travel to Lebanon. Earlier, Prime Minister Modi, on his three-day U.S. visit, addressed the summit of the 